just uh, sorry. Let me just again, uh, in a way, uh, emphasize the announcement uh, with regard to uh, that is our mission, uh, a mission uh, trip to uh, Muense. I do know that. Uh, takes one to look into the heart of God uh, to be excited uh, concerning the work of God. I equally know that uh, this world has things which pull us away from God and thinking the gifts we receive from God will give us satisfaction and forgetting that the giver is the one we need to constantly be in love with. And therefore, I want to say, those of you uh, who will be using God willing, our church, uh, small vast space, small quantum, and those of you who are really interested in exposing yourself to mission, the short mission trip, please uh, sign up uh, with the Pazi or with Deacon Kamika. Please sign up. Um, and then also there is this ministry which uh, Elder Pazi has uh, prayed for in Pamozi, Srokawama. Uh, it's a ministry again we want to encourage as many church members to be part of. We, we're doing quite a lot there. In fact, on a sad note, I understand one of the kids uh, who comes for the feeding program passed on. Uh, and that is due to... Um, malnutrition. Uh, we can't have people die uh, from poverty when God has graciously blessed us with abundance. As a church, let's rise up uh, to the occasion and be part of that ministry. It's run by this church. It's a ministry you can be part of. You will not be in the limelight, but God will see your good deeds. And his name will be praised among those who do not know him and hopefully they will come to know Jesus Christ. Very important for us who are Christians. Let me invite you this morning as we consider looking at a subject um, which is a very important subject and I think there is no other subject we can talk about uh, from any given pulpit which honors God than to talk about the name of Jesus Christ. We are here because of Christ Jesus. And I want to speak on the subject concerning the power of the name of Jesus Christ. What is so special about the man Jesus Christ and more so just that name, Jesus. I know we are living in a time and age when this name is abused, misused, misunderstood, misapplied. Just the name, Jesus. And once we understand that this is not just the name, it will change how we approach this man called Jesus Christ. It will change us who are Christians when we claim to be Christians, those who are followers of Christ Jesus. So the name Jesus Christ. Then with me to Acts and chapter 4 and what I'll do and I hope to run through so that we can appreciate at the end of the day the man called Jesus Christ. In Acts chapter 4, I'll read basically 12 verses, but I'll try to run through the context of this passage of scripture so that we appreciate the 
for us even to come to a position to appreciate this name, Jesus. In Acts chapter 4, what we have here is the apostles Peter and John, having preached and also after having in a way performed a miracle in the name of Jesus. And somebody who was 40 years lame stood and walked. And people started to question how come? What name, what power did you use to have this man stand and walk? In that given context, there was some dispute. People were not happy with Peter and John, and so in a way they were arrested. And here we read in chapter 4, Now as they spoke to the people, the priests, the captain of the temple, the Sadducees came upon them, being greatly disturbed that they taught the people and preached Jesus, the resurrection from the dead. And they laid hands on them and put them in custody until the next day, for it was already evening. However, many of those who had the way believed, and the number of men came to be about 5,000. And it came to pass on the next day in the morning that their rulers and elders and scribes, as well as Annas the high priest, Caiaphas, John and Alexander, and as many of the family of the high priest were gathered together in Jerusalem. And when they had set them in the midst, they asked, By what power or by what name have you done this? That is the miracle. For a bad man was 40 years, stand and walk. Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers of rulers of the people and elders of Israel, if we this day are judged for a good deed done to the helpless man, by what means he has been made well, verse 10, let it be known to you all that to all the people of Israel, that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, by him, this man stands here before you all for him. This is the stone which was rejected by your builders, which has become the chief cornerstone. Verse 12. Nor is there salvation in any other, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. Now, I want us to appreciate what is happening here before we dive in. As a matter of introduction, as we speak of this name, Jesus. For there is no other name under heaven given to mankind. It is in this name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth that this man stands here. here. My dear brothers and sisters, dear friends, listen. There is something about a name. Parents don't just pick names to give to their children. No. Ask those of us, those of you who have children. The name is a big deal. And I do know some, especially the young generation, even before the baby is born, they may have eight or nine names and they talk and talk and discuss until they zero up on a given name. Names have a big deal. 
It gives you the identity. Your name. It's the name that brings some kind of significance upon your life. Your name. So your name reveals a lot about you. And so often when you meet someone for the first time, I don't think you ask them, what do you do? Often you ask, what is your name? You may introduce yourself, I'm Carl. That's my name. What is your name? It's because by your name, you are identified. By your name, we got to know who you are. You know, it is said, and I want to give you just as a way to help you appreciate what I'll be talking about. Why you must listen to what I'm saying. Because your name is what identifies you. They pose the question. By what name of does? You know, I'm told my grandfather, who basically his name was Mwamba, but I'm told that he had some power. I know the kind of power is the power to beat people. You know, traditionally they'll say by the pandemic, you know, some juju. That this Mr. Mwamba, when they go out drinking, then the fight arose. It could be five or six people. He will beat them, all of them. Once he beats them, he will tie them together using their trousers or shirts and start to drag them. Was it wrong they came to know or to give him the nickname Makulani? Somebody, once he beats you, Allah Kukulani. And so, I am known, if I go back to Korokoso, in that village called Samuel Senga, if I have to introduce myself, I am Kabe. Which Kabe are you? Now say, I am the great or the grandson to Makulani. Immediately, they will know who. Your name identifies you. And unfortunately, of course, we do have names from the East End, Southern Province, but even Central Province, or somewhere here in London, Buffalo. Ask them, how did Buffalo become Buffalo? Or Buffalo, or Buffalo, or even Buffalo. Oh yeah, even Bamidu Baspiri. And all these names, they mean something. There's an identity to that. I remember a long time ago, 1986, when I was still working in Kasama. And then, lo and behold, we have this couple we are helping out there in agriculture. The wife was due. Called the friend of my workmate, uh, Mr. Dillman, that will help us. And Dillman, we used to have an Isuzu. And so we rushed for the rush there was not there but I was there in Kasama. It was in Mumbi. They rushed there to pick this woman. We put them behind the vehicle, driving past to Kasama General Hospital. By the time they got there, Mr. Juman gets out to try to get the woman and the other women out. There was already a baby born behind the Zeus truck. And you know the name of that chairman? Of course you know, you can guess. He's called what? Isuzu. So he's Isuzu Chanda. He's about today, maybe about the 70 to 80 years. When you go to Mumu, we ask, we are looking for Isuzu. How did he get the name Isuzu? That's the identity. He was born behind the Isuzu farm. What about this name called Jesus Christ? So there's a name. And this is why I want us to appreciate this name this morning. Peradventure, one of you come to impress Christ. All those of us who are Christians, is that we can't be careful. 
how we use this name. Let me give you the context of this passage of scripture. What we are seeing here, like I did mention, what we are seeing here, Peter and John were going into the temple at the hour of prayer when a beggar sought arms from them that you see in chapter 3. And so he was asking them for something. And so in verse 3 of chapter 3 we read, and Peter seeing, and, and seeing John and Peter about to go into the temple, he asked for arms. Peter fixing his eyes on him. And John they said, look at us. Verse 5, so he gave them his attention, expecting to receive something from them. Then Peter said, silver and gold I do not have, but what I do have, I give him. This is a very powerful, profound statement. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk in the name. And so we have there Peter and John pronouncing the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And immediately you notice what happens there. People were confused. People were asking questions. And one such question that they asked, and they said, wait a minute, no such a thing has ever happened. And so when they were brought, they were asked in verse 7, in chapter 4, and when they set them in the midst, they ask them, by what power or name have you done this? Because the miracle is out there. How did you do it? What happened? What magic? What power? What name? And friends, Peter and there you read in verse 8, filled by or with the Holy Spirit or empowered or energized or in the boldness and courage of God, the Holy Spirit, he speaks out. And this is what he speaks out there in verse 9. Rulers of the people and elders of Israel, listen, if this day, if we are judged, I'm sorry, if, if, if we this day are judged for a good deed done to the helpless man, and by what means he has been made well, you are asking by what power or by what name? We want to tell there is a name. Let it be known to you, O Israel and the people, that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the by me, this man stands here, called or healed. That very man whom you rejected has now become the chief cornerstone. And my text this morning is verse 12. And he says, Nor is there salvation in any other. For there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. 
Let me read that particular verse from the NIV. Because the NIV, in a way, I would say, kind of a practice. Salvation is not found in no one else. For there is no other name under heaven given to mankind by which we must be saved. From that verse, just a few observations. First observation I want to make is this. There is no salvation found in no one else. There is no foundation found in no one else. No, is there salvation in any other? In there I want to show you the monopoly with regard to the Christian faith. It's the only faith in which you find salvation and hope in this world. There is no other salvation except second there is a name given it's a free gift there is a name and of course you know in that name there is a person there is a name given given to mankind and that name is Jesus Christ. And thirdly, I want you to see that that name is the only name in which you and I must be saved. In other words, if you don't have Jesus Christ, you are not saved. If you don't pursue Christ, you will not find salvation. There is no other Notice with me quickly my first observation. There is no salvation in any other. Now, this is a bold statement. There is something about this thing why it becomes the only. In other ways, we are saying no salvation and no other name. Meaning there is only one way of salvation. There is something about this name. Let me just quickly do one or two things. I know you have your Bibles. If you don't, it's okay. I'll read it for you. The question is, what is so unique and what gives this name the monopoly with regard to salvation? What is it that there could only be one name? Read with me Matthew chapter 1. In Matthew chapter 1 and verse 21, verse 21. Matthew chapter 1 and verse 21. You can quickly also put your finger to Luke chapter 1 and verse 21. I want to show you why there's no other salvation. There's no salvation in anything. You know, before I read that text, let me just paint to you a picture. Mary was pregnant. Joseph was supposed to be her husband. Betrothed, never coveted. Before they could come together as husband and wife, Mary was found to be pregnant. And lo and behold, before they could do anything as it is written, Joseph wanted to divorce, to secretly say to Mary, Goodbye, you've been unfaithful. How come you are pregnant? To God Himself to send an angel to speak to Joseph. Do not do this. Listen to verse 21. There we read, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary, your wife, 
For that which is conceived in her is holy, of the Holy Spirit. Verse 21. And she will bring forth a son. A son. You shall call his name Jesus. And he gives a reason that name is given. For he will save his people from their sins. Already you can immediately young people tell the meaning of this name Jesus. This is why it's the only name given. Turn to Luke chapter 1. I did mention Luke chapter 1, verse 31. Again, there is the same story you read there in verse 31 of Luke chapter 1. We read there, and behold, Mary, do not be afraid, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bring forth a son, and he shall be called Jesus. He will be great. He will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord will give him a throne of his father David, and he will reign over all the house of Jacob forever, and his kingdom there shall be no end. Now, this name, Jesus, if I were to quickly maybe illustrate as I'm trying to show you, already I've shown you. But basically, it's conceived of God the Holy Spirit. This name, Jesus, did not come from men or Joseph. And I know if God had not intervened even to give that to the name, I can speculate here. Maybe Joseph would have given. Jesus, the name like Chipeko. This is just a gift. Chipeko, isn't it? My talk of this is Chipeko. Or even you would have uh, uh, wondered and said, This is a miracle, baby. For many, many would have simply said, This is a blessing. This is a blessing. And I'm sure if they were from Southern Province, would have said his name is Ndagamba. Ndagamba, I'm surprised. But without meeting any man. So you see a man, well, what's his name? Is Ndagamba. Why are they giving him name Ndagamba? It's a miracle. No. This name is commanded directly from God because there is something about this name, Jesus. Of course, there were many other Jesus around. And this is why, often than not, he is distinguished from others. Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus of, you can miss it even here, who has done this in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. You read it also down there in verse 10 of chapter 4. Let it be known to you that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, he's been distinguished from the other Jesus. Because it was a common name. But this Jesus of Nazareth, the name simply means one who saves. All the same. And this is the reason. Why? There is no other but Christ alone. Jesus alone. There is no other name. And so, my dear friend, if you are here and you are thinking, you can become a Christian without believing in the Lord Jesus Christ, impressing him as your Lord and Savior. 
repenting of your sins. You are living a lie. He is the only Savior. There is no other. In fact, Jesus Christ made this statement. I am the way. I am the truth. No man comes to the Father but by me. It's Jesus saying, I am the only way to the Father. Jesus said, I am the door to the sheepfold. You can't get in and become part of the sheep, the flock of God. I am the door. He is the only way to the Father. Therefore, when he says, for there is no salvation in any other, we are claiming as Christians and saying, Jesus Christ is the only Savior of the world. No any other. In fact, the Apostle Paul speaks to that effect when he says, there is no, there is only one God and one mediator between God and man. And that man is Christ Jesus. Let me ask a simple question. I know time is flying. I just realize that it's already this. You know, a simple question. This has nothing to do with you being good, keeping the law, or trying to do some good things to be impressed, to impress God. You must embrace Christ Jesus. It is only this name and no other. But secondly, notice, we are told there also that there is no other name under heaven given to me. There is no other name given to men or to mankind, as the, the, the NIV puts it. To mankind, salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to mankind. All I see there is the grace of God. It's given to mankind. The whole aspect of God giving his son, sending his son. For God so loved the world that he gave his son. This name is given as a means of salvation. No other name is given except this name, Jesus. And I want to say, as I'm speaking to myself, there is power in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And it is demonstrated here, we can see, first, simply in saying, look at us, silver and gold, we don't have, but we give you what we have, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, stand and walk, there is something in this name, and I want to say, some kind of power. No other name. Buddha, Muhammad, oh, no other name. But this name. But this is just power in Christ's name. Now, if I time what I've shown you, brethren, how this name, just across the scriptures, you see how this name manifests itself in various situations and circumstances. They call upon the name of the Lord. In, in all kinds of circumstances where you find that this name, by virtue of just calling upon this name, demons tremble. It, it, you can even see it in the negative. When people came and Jesus was telling them, Okay, in, didn't we in your name prophesy? In your name heal? In your name cast out demons? Yes, yes, you did that, but I don't know you. This name has power. 
It's not just the name. It's the man, Jesus Christ. And for one simple reason. Because of who he is. This name, when you look closely into who this name is, do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you conceive in your womb and bring forth a son. You shall call his name Jesus. Why? He will be great. He will be called the Son of the Highest. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and his kingdom there shall be no end. This is the Jesus Christ we look to. The name. Uh, and Jesus himself testifies, and that, that day you ask anything in my name, Whenever you ask the Papa in my name, it will be granted to you. There's something in this name which has been given to us. And Christ spoke finally as was testifying and commanding his own disciples. Go into the world because all authority has been given to you. Authority in heaven and authority on earth. And he says, and Lord, I will be with you. There is power in the name of Jesus Christ. Friends, let's not reduce Jesus Christ to a theological statement. Let's not reduce Jesus Christ to simply a statement of faith. This is the very God. Jesus simply means Savior. Jesus, that name God with us, Emmanuel, that's Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the Redeemer, Jesus Christ, the Lord Almighty shall be great, this Jesus Christ is Master, in charge of all things, Adonai, and this Jesus Christ, he is the King of Kings, the Lamb of God. This is the only name given for humanity to find hope, salvation, and forgiveness. This name has power, my dear friends. This name has power to bring blessings upon your life. This name has power to determine a hopeful, assured destiny the day you shall breathe your last. Believe in the name of Jesus Christ. This name, the Apostle Paul would speak of this name and quickly just give me maybe for some five or ten minutes. This name, this is how the Apostle Paul described this name in Philippians chapter 2. Speaking of Jesus Christ in Philippians chapter 2. And he says, you know, he's speaking of Christ's exhortation. And he says, this same, this same Jesus, this same Jesus being in the form of God, Philippians 2, verse 6, did not consider himself something to hold on, though he was the very God. This same Jesus made himself of no reputation. Taking the form of man upon seven, born of a woman, the same Jesus he said. He did not just take himself there to become of no reputation. And yet being found in the very appearance of man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on the cross. Therefore, God has also highly exalted him, given him the name which is above every name. And because of that, every name shall bow before Jesus Christ. Because of that, every time 
shall confess this name that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father. You may be here, you are listening. Listen. This is more than just a name. This is God incarnate. This is God becoming a human being. This is God identifying himself with the people he wants to save. This is God becoming like you and me to take all your sins upon himself. This is God, Emmanuel, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. So right now, if you think it's just another name, listen, a day will come because Jesus Christ has been highly exalted Given a name above every name, a day is coming when you will bow down your knee before him. It is coming, it won't be long. All of us will look up to him, others trembling, because judgment will be due when you look down on this. Those of you who have come to believe in Jesus Christ with joy in your eyes, with humility and great appreciation, say, thank you, Jesus. And you confess one day that he is God. You confess one day. It is as the question of time. You and I will confess. This is the name that has been Finally, this name has been given by which we must be saved. We must be saved. He has been given to save you and to save me. Just that he pronounced Jesus or Jehovah is selfish. That's his name. That you must be saved in his name, by this name, through this name. There's no any other. It's in this name you must be saved. You know, I often ask people, if say for example today you were to die, and God were to ask you the question, why should I allow you into my kingdom? And people go ask, say all kinds of things and statements. I've been a good guy. You know, I've been giving to church. I attend church. I've been, I've been faithful to my wife or to my husband. I give my, ten, my tithe and offerings. I do not insult and so that do not count. Do you have Jesus Christ in your life? Are you saved? Have you been forgiven of your sins in Christ Jesus? Friends, this may sound just like anywhere we know these things. Listen, this is what is going to count on that day. This is the name by which you must be saved. Salvation is found in this name, the Lord Jesus Christ. Really, God has given His Son. Come, Jesus. Believe in Him. You will truly be. Saved, saved from your sins, saved from the wrath of God, saved from eternal punishment. When you come to Jesus Christ, believe in Him by faith. This man who was given 
was given to go and hang on to the cross for my sins. Press him at a personal level and confess of your sins to him. Tell him all your sins and repent and look into God for this salvation. We must be saved by this The big question as I go Are you saved? Do you have this person, Jesus Christ? Living in your life. Do it. Have you acknowledged him as the only name given to you to have a salvation that is anchored in the finished work of Christ? Oh, Jesus Christ. The question I'm saying, I'm asking is, are you saved? Are you a child of God? And to us who are Christians, listen, dear brothers and sisters, there is power in the name of Jesus Christ. Let's not take the name of life. It's in this name we have salvation. It's in this name it's in this name that the lame man was healed. It's in this name upon which we we'll stand behind the cross when the wrath of God ushered on you and you'll be protected. It is this name. He is the master. He is the king of your life. Praise the name of Jesus Christ is not simply a name. It's all about the King of Kings, the Creator, the Giver of Life. We must honor the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Father, we thank you that Jesus is here. He promised us love and purity for in the cross of the cross. We might not even feel it, but He sees. And Lord, my prayer is that as we lift the name of Jesus now, that He will draw men and women to Himself. May one or two this morning ask themselves this question Have I believed? Have I received? Have I impressed Jesus Christ? For my salvation. Lord, we pray as well, as who are Christians, that we may renew our commitment to this man. There is no salvation except for this man. Lord, help us that we may live Jesus by and experience the 